Welcome back, and guys, Nori's here, and for today we can play Dusk Phone, a game made by Nefrencia. Correct me if I am wrong. Anyway, it's a visual novel game, and let's just start the game and see how is my walkthrough with the game, because I like games that has multiple endings. This game continues dark and and certain themes may not be suitable for everyone. Well, that's fine, it can be suitable for you. Would you like to see the content for me? Yes, yes. This game features textual descriptions of manipulation, blood, violence, death, murder, and dubious consent. Dubious? 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 Hmm. There are visual, non-graphic deception. There is no light in this city. Okay, fine. A dark red moon is all that illuminates our eternal night. Even the lanterns are obscured by countless moons. People trace the same path every day, seemingly possessed with no spirit at all. Simply roaming on what's going on with the people some days it feels like i am the only one who is alive and everyone else is merely a ghost it wasn't always like that long ago the city shone as a beacon to all those who believe in in the one lord until the red plague fell upon us and our great cathedral was abandoned by those who proclaimed they would save us. Proclaimed they would save us. Okay. They took you guys by advantage. They took the light with them and they left. Hmm. Okay. But they couldn't take everything from us. I, for one, have done my best to find hope in a small thing, like my, like me meeting him. There is no light in this city, but he, he is the sun. I don't know who he is, but I saw him one day, ambling through the town square. And his garments were impeccable. Tailored and his hair framed his face in a way I had only seen in painting. What a handsome boy then. And those fine threads, if he had stopped by my workshop, I would have surely remembered. Of course, I have seen attractive men in my life, but there is simply something different about him that glints in his eyes. There is something. As I examined him, his eyes met mine, and a radiant smile came over his features. The light behind his eyes shone so dazzlingly. I hasn't seen anyone. Okay. And it occurred to me that I was staring at him. I quickly averted my eyes. <laughs> Excuse me. I rushed past him, embarrassed by the blush slowly rising in my cheeks. In the days that I followed, I passed by the town square as often as I could afford myself the time to hoping to catch a glimmer of him again. I had to confirm for myself that he was not an illusion. More than that, I had to confirmed that the light that I had found in his eyes was more than a flock. The longer I went without seeing him, the more I became convinced that I had made it all up. Well, I, I think you didn't do it yourself, or you didn't imagine by yourself, it just is trying to attract him. That he was no different from the others, and that I was desperate for anything that would change 
the monotony of my dull days. Sure about that, girl. But he was there again. That same expression was unmistakably here. He was looking at me with those eyes. Eyes that make me forget about the dreary place that sent me far away, far away. Ever since then, I couldn't get him out of my head, more so, I couldn't let go. At first, I was content, glancing at him every now and then, a gentle reminder that not all is dark and not all hope is lost. But the more I gave in the, the thinking about him, the less I could accept the daily routine that I've been shaving down, shoving down my own throat and pretending I was content with, content with. What am I saying is I grew needy. I had been looking for an escape this entire time, not knowing how to find one I could leave. But where to? Hmm. Nothing but death awaits those who adventure outside the city walls. Look at that. The only solace available to me might be the arms of another. You sure about that girl? Sold my arms of another? But I had never found anyone fit to hold me. Still, things are different now. I have nothing but to lose and everything to gain. That's why today I will, I will change my fate. She can change her fate, sure. There he is, a soul heart trying to calm my quacking heart and nervous breathing. He is mesmerizing. Uh, hello. Good day. Can I help? You, I don't believe we've met. Oh, of course, why would he remember me? The words I saw carefully, he has spell to spell from me. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, well, I have seen you around in the, in the town square. I know, this isn't going anywhere. Oh, I recall now. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you earlier. I don't perceive ghosts too often. Please come in. Why don't you join me for some tea? I would love some tea. It's something of a hobby of mine. Growing plants and combining them into interesting flavor combinations. Well, if you can, I like orange tea, orange flavor tea. Unfortunately, I am rather strapped for taste tester, so I am unsure if they are any good. My place, my face flushes, he's being so kind, but why? I'm no more than a stranger, locked from the streets. Perhaps, will it be, he sees the same light in my eyes that I see in his. A gentle warmth spread through out me, and I finally find it in me to meet his guys. That sounds lovely, I must admit, no commercial of tea, but I do enjoy a cup every now and then. Hmm, every now and then you say. With plenty of mild traffic. Okay, maybe that is a fox pass to a true tea enthusiast. That's good. No such a thing. Some teas are better. Tea are better. Teas are better with milk and some without. It took time to get you acquainted. Okay. But please, it's quite chilly outside. Do come in. I know, you know, 
again cannot help my smile from growing <laughs> okay it seems that whoever is daring truly does come out victorious as i enter through the door frame i glance up at him can't help but notice those teeth look awfully sharp they are sharp there is a reason for that i don't know yet the mansion interior is reminiscent of an antique shop one that did not get customers all too often hmm. see there is old stuff there is an earnest to the way it looks almost abandoned half hidden behind cobwebs and dust but the familiar smell of old books await waiting over me is enough to put me at ease is wafting books wafting as i follow him through the hall i look around in and wonder the walls are lined with portrait of women all of them look different but they bear a chilling resemblance to one another hmm. some of them look expressionless others sad or even anguished not one of them wears a smile maybe there is something wrong but must but most unsettling of all them remind me very much of me very much of her should i keep quiet or ask keep quiet i guess i'm gonna go with uh, this path first let's see how it ends i don't want to pry into affairs into his affairs everyone the enjoyable to talk about there's none whom the red light hasn't affected there is none whom the red okay, okay. the eternal night fell on all of us and as much as the known might try to deny it it took something from us we make we make do with what we have left and it is not up to me to open up those wounds again besides i am a guest it would be rude of me to pester him with intrusive questions when we've only just been properly acquainted well uh, maybe it's not good to ask him straight away i'd have expected a mansion of this size to have servants sweeping the floors or convers conversing in hushed whispers as they pass through the hallways however i don't see a single soul as he guides me to the drawing Hmm. Our only hmm. accompaniment the echoed sound of our footstep. Hmm. The more I see of his residence, the more I am reminded of a room, a tomb, where some noble lies buried beneath piles of luxuries he no longer has a use for. But there is no one in his machine. A deep sense of loneliness seeps out of every wall, threatening to suffocate me. I wonder how he feels wandering through these hallways all alone. Here we are. Please have a seat, I'll be right back. He gestures at a worn down but clearly well made sofa. before disappearing behind the door i still i sat down and look around the room to pass the time it is beautiful but looks somehow disheveled the candle stand cracked in the candlestick and a thin layer of a dust covers more surface in the room okay there is dust everywhere further exemplify its parent the apparent these i think i know my english is that good guys he stepped back inside a silver tray held delicately 
in him in hand. He has since his I hope I didn't keep you waiting so long. Not at all. He swiftly places down two elegant teacup on the table. There their uh, aromatic steam breathing like the okay the side of the lace dolly dolly pristine white color makes a slight worry keep up my back and must not spoil the tea well uh, i hope the tea is good for you steadying my hand i left the teacup and bring it to my lips the tea ripples as a blue on it Gently. Of course, it is entirely too hot to drink. This was merely a practice run. Perhaps a few minutes of conversation should have it already. I take it you do not make much use of drawing room. He lowers his cup and nods. Ah, I suppose it was obvious. The majority of my time is spent in my atelier or in my study when I wish to read. You like to read and what drawing probably you looked at sometime. As you can likely tell by now the place is far too spacious for me alone. Yeah, the place is too big for you alone, man. Still as long as I live in this dreaded set dread city I can't bring myself to abandon my family home, even if uh, the turn reminds me. Okay. Perhaps especially so because of that, I fall silent for a moment, unsure of how to respond. Should I distract him from the dreary topic by delving into our shared interest in reading? If both of you like reading, it doesn't feel right. Scatting around his tragedy merely because it's unpleasant. Well, because, well, obviously you just know each other now. Was it the red pledge? My sister and I lost our parents and baby brother. It must be hard not having anyone. I did not mean to make you pity me. Death might be con. Solution compared to wandering around the ghost of a city. Consolation. I do hope your family is at peace. Apologize. I did not mean to dampen the mood. It's fine, man. Now, enough of all that. Tell me, to what do I owe the pleasure of your visits? Oh no, I can't avoid it any longer. I came here for a reason. But would it be absurd to lie it on the table like this too soon? What do you mean, girl? Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I'm gonna ask about him instead. For goodness sake, he does not know me. It would be sheer insanity to tell him now that I am here because my life is an empty, meaningless routine. And seeing his face is the only thing that has made me feel alive in years. Ludicrous. Ludicrous? Even repeating all that in my head sounds ridiculous. Oh, okay, okay, okay. How I would love to confess, but I'm not do it yet. Why did he have to ask me so false lightly? Light. I look into his captivating amber eyes and take a sip of my tea. I can't bear to lie to him. All I can do is avoid his inquiry by subtly changing the subject. Oh, but where are my manners? I haven't even introduced myself yet. My name is Shash. Before I realized, he put his finger to my lips. Our first touch, I can't suppress faintest future of my heart. The chill of his cold skin lingers on my lips even when he moves his hand away. It's not important, not yet. I'll get to know you in many ways, 
and this one will be the last. You sure about that, man? Hmm. What do you mean? It will be the last. I don't. He's up to something. I know why. Let's continue. This one will be the last. What did he mean by that? I know that there was something more to him from the past moments. My fascination with him is only heightened with his mysterious liberation. Very well, I oblige you. In returns, will you tell me your name? Bergus, Bergus Dylan Seri, Dylan Kiroi. Did I spell it right, guys? Dylan Siroy. Vergulus, Vergulus, Dylan. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna call Vergulus Dylan Siroy. A nice name, like it. Vergulus, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Well, it's my pleasure to know this name also. <laughs> Vergulus. He sheepishly nods his head. I let his name swish around the inside of my mouth like wine. It is pleasant. It is pleasant. Have you been living in the city for long? Ah, oh, a very long, longer than I can be bothered to remember. Are you a vampire? Tell me, have you ever tried to leave me? Where do you mean? Based on what I have heard, the journey past these city walls spells stand dead for someone like me. Okay. I have tried. It is not the journey that is impossible. It is a very act of a stepping outside the city walls. Some dark force warps itself around me, enough to make me struggle and suffer but never enough to kill never enough to kill you say so like you i have been stuck here wanting nothing more than to leave yet to not knowing where my eyes widen with curiosity i've never heard of anyone who has tried to leave this place we all resign ourselves to our hopeless fate and do nothing but pray to the one lord that Things will change, but they never do. Why is that? Everything only falls into further this this repair. Yet still, I cannot shake that small grains of hope that embeds itself in my head. I want to know what he was, what he found, what he has found. I want to know what he has found. I left my cup take another sip of my tea but I feel myself growing hazy and my attention slips uh -oh. I do hope the tea was to like him oh he he drugged us this dude muffled screams turtled me awake and as I desperately attempt to jolt up I uh, met with a searing ash that grips my entire body. I can't see anything. A cold sweet, sweet sweat runs down my back and my breath hatches in my throat. My head swells with question as my situation sinks in. What happened? Where is he? How could he do this to me? I try to set up more slowly this time. Oh, only then do I sense the presence of a tightly yanked chain around my ankle. It allows for minimum movement, keeping me tethered to this uh, wretched place. Oh, girl, you shouldn't, girl. My eyes adjust as I feel my way around the room, hands moving against peeling wallpapers, ripping on fabric, and accidentally knocking against wood. 
she's regaining her conscience. It's no dog, dang attic. It appears to be a fairly well maintained guest bedroom. Or perhaps it used to be someone else. A melancholy thought. We don't know, girl, but we'll see about that. We finally, you are finally awake. Oh, there is a blood on him. What did you do, man? I gasped involuntarily at the sight of him. Don't be afraid, dear poor one. I would never hurt you. The sound of muffled screaming fills the air once more, and I recoil. What are those sounds? And whose blood is that? He whips the blood from his face and licks his finger in a smooth, practiced gesture as he draws closer to me. Up close and under dim lightning, I notice an almost otherworldly glow in his golden eyes. Oh, his golden eyes, you say. The pain. Okay. Emanating from him is nostalgic and somehow intoxicating. It is making your head spin. I must have heard the tales, perhaps you dismissed them all as nonsense, but the red plague isn't always fatal. Those of us unfortunate enough to survive it are changed forever. It is a blood and blood alone that sustain us. You are a vampire. My breath gets more erotic as his face inch closer. Do I frighten you? I avert my eyes. Look at the floor. I want to say that he does, of course, he does. Yet despite that, something inside me still finds him beautiful. As I ponder my response, my eyes hover over the chain round my ankle. Could my judgment be cloudy, clouded by his golden eyes and silver tongue? Silver tongue. Well, you like the guy for sure. I yank on the chain and must and must have the courage to look at him. Remove this chain immediately. Of course, if you promise to stay by my side, then I would be more than happy to do so. Of course, there is no way I can't promise that. I know, I know. I cannot ask that of you, but precisely, precisely why the chain is okay, that's why. Though it is a charming that you would not even think to deceive me. He so softly pats my head and I instantly back away from his touch. Ah, apologize. I didn't mean to come. Descend, please. Pretend it didn't occur. Why did you do this to me? I suppose by now there is nothing left but to be direct about my intentions. Dearest pale one, won't you grant me some of your blood? Some of her blood? I'm gonna refuse. He wants my blood. Absolutely not. Who knows what will happen to me? I might even contract the red plague myself. There has to be a way out of here. As I contemplate the means of my escape, he takes my silence as an answer. And say, just please consider it for the both of us. I will leave you be for now. Besides, I need to finish what I start. Finish what he start? What did you, sorry man? You wouldn't hurt me, would you? I'm sorry that it has come to this. Chaining you to this room, but I promise I would never cheat you badly. I need you. What do you mean? You need her. Why do you need her, man? Vargas, why do you need her? Can you answer? 
You should have the answer for that later. Please make yourself at home. This room is yours to use with as you please. As he starts to walk away again, I follow him far as far as my chain allows. Hmm. Why am I doing this? Why do I yearn for him? I, I thought I was scared, but I don't know what to think anymore. Logic seeps through my fingers as my head bounds after him. Standing in the door frame, he turns around. For you to approach me this time, the fates have aligned, I'm sure, and for that I am grateful. Thank you, my dear power. Suffocating loneliness envelops the dreary room once more. Could I have known this? Okay, okay, I'm clicking too fast. I scream, I hear the distance grow louder and louder until they eventually stop leaving in their wake. In their wake, a deafening sounds more apprehensive than the noise. Ever was. Good morning, dear power. Will you offer me your blood today? Uh, what if I refuse, mass man? <laughs> what happen if I refuse? Very well then. I will see you again tomorrow. Good morning, dear Pawan. Pawan, I hope. Well, you offer me. Okay, okay. No, I'm gonna keep refusing. Tomorrow waits us then. The days pass by quietly. As promised, he does not treat me badly. There is food and to eat, and he even brings me books to read. He is being nice, yet he is being, I don't know, strict. Every day is like clockwork, he asks me. Okay, we have amicable conversation some days, but I no longer care to learn anything more about him. How wrong I was to assume so many things about him from seeing his smiling face is all I want is to leave this place that empty life I wanted to escape has become my dearest dream I wonder if my sister misses me it must be hard running the workshop all by herself I even miss the, ma the mending of some workman's clothes who would have ever Imagine that. If only I had told someone about my plan to meet him, then maybe I wouldn't have ended up in this situation. Have you finished your breakfast? I have. It was delicious. Thank you so much. I have slowly cracked my poor girl face. I think I'm pretty convincing. I'm glad to hear that. Now, you know what I will ask, don't you? Although I have enjoyed our peaceful days, I am not as sure how much longer I can endure. Uh, what do you mean? Your blood going on? I am grievous and your innocent smile only beckons me closure. Beacons me closure. Let me in, won't you? I'll make sure it won't hurt. In fact, I think it might make me feel good. Well, it really... As I stare at him with an unsure expression, he slowly inches toward me. These are the circumstances I have been waiting for. This is my only chance. My only chance. I know where he keeps the key. I have seen it. Oh, what are you going to do there? Calm down, please. Wait until the very last moment. I shake my sleeve and catch the breakfast knife in my hand. And without hesitation, I drop it into his neck. Oh, fortunate. His eyes turn wide and his parts and he parts his lips in shake. Then he looks at his eyes and frowns. Look at me. So, this. Ah. This is how it will end this time. He grabbed me. His grip on me loosens, and I push him off. 
He paused with the thought blood fully. I have done it. I I look at the blood on my hands that splatters across my chest. I called him. It all went by too fast. I feel sick. I hold onto a nearby bed post to hold myself up. I called him. My head is beating in my eardrums. I could not believe it worked. I escaped. I expected more results, but uh, unfortunate man. Somehow I shook up, struggling to breathe. I have to get out. I cannot breathe in. With trembling hands, I scream, scrambled for the key in his breast pocket and saw out of his mansion without looking back. As I got to sleep at night, I dream. There he is, staring at me with desolate eyes, not saying a word. He doesn't have to. My girl passes under his watchful glass all the time. For nights after that, I can't escape his haunting face. I'd wake up in a cold sweat, wondering if I had done the right thing. Other rights, other nights, when the fates feel kind, I dream of being in his arms. We discuss a book I recently read for what we should have for lunch tomorrow. As I wake up from dreams of what could have been, I find tears streaming down my face. Whether dream or nightmare. They eventually start to be, to bleed into my into my walking life. The lions blow as if to say, "This cannot cannot end here." And somewhere I know this has not ended here. We got in the fourth ending. Perpetuate the Cecil. There you go, guys. This is the fourth ending. Okay, let's start the other game. Ah, okay, no, no, I'm gonna skip it. What if I, yeah, okay, if we skip it, we can like pass it like that, or we just skip it. There is option for that. Uh, let me see. Has the reference series, okay, this, skip. What if we went with the option Ask about the portraits I guess I'm gonna go with that Lum. Yeah, I'll ask about the portraits I'll keep quiet I'm gonna say first if history skip I can skip it to this point That's good Well, there, there you go guys This is how you skip the To this part what lovely portrait the artist is evening, but I must say they look so sorry. Why I ask the story of these paintings? He turns around slowly and crosses his lips as though he's unsure how to respond. After a drawn out silence, I start. Oh, I'm sorry. If I prayed into something I shouldn't have. His eyes soften. No. No, don't worry. It's another hobby of mine, though I fear I'm not very good at it. After all this time, painting the same subject, I have at least managed a medicum of self in portrait. Sure, portrait. Medicum of scale in portrait. So, they are, they are all portraits of the same woman. Then what love you must have had for her. I feel a pang of jealousy within my gut as I picture him gassing, gazing at her intensely, walking to capture her likeness stroke by stroke. Likeness stroke by stroke. Hmm. He really loved the woman. Do you like them? He stares lonely, longingly the painting for a moment, then directs his attention back to me. 
They are beautiful, truly. I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. If you didn't mean it. However, if you didn't mind me asking, who is she? He chuckles, toning his gas out of his. You are just the same as always. It's just the same as well. Why? What? What do you mean? Why are you telling me that? Can't you see? They are you. All of them are you. Wait, what do you mean that? My beautiful pale one. Shining like the moon in the night sky. How I would have loved to capture your smile. Hmm. Ah, I can feel it. You feel it too, don't you? You are acting out. Yes, this time. It's different. The miracle I have been waiting for. You are drawn to me this time. Hmm. You've never looked at me like that. Scarlet eyes sparkling. That face. No pain, no fear. It makes me happy. He's acting weird. Play along or panic? What should I do? What if I panic? I wanna go with this fast pass. I I don't know what you are on about. I cannot deny that these portraits do bear some resemblance to me. But you haven't meant and I've certainly not sat for any portraits. Hmm, I have to say. Oh, no, I forgot to save. I'm just gonna save there, just in case. But I really forgot to save. I mean, there's no point in that. No, 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 no. Just when I thought that things had changed. What was, what was it this time? Was it something I'd said? It's usually, isn't it? You. Why must you to torment me like this? The light I saw in him left his eyes completely in that moment. A cold chill remained, leaving me to wonder which one was the real him. I, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I have to leave. I take a step back toward the front door, but he grab, grips my with terrifying strings. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. I glance at his stoic face with bewilderment. Why is this expression so dead? I can't understand any of this. And his eyes, how hollow they seem now. All light ex extinguished. Extinguished. It pains me to see him so. But as he tightens his hold on my wrist, I snap back to the situation at hand. Something wrong with him. I try to pull my arms from his grip, but it simply won't move. Keep pulling. So we're gonna keep pulling. I keep pulling with that string, with what string I have, but it won't move at all. Just, what do you want from me? What do you want from here, man? Look at me with these eyes again, and things can do go back to normal. Please, my dearest me, look at me. Okay, the way you are looking at her are keeping me out. I know what he wants now. I am terrified. <laughs> this dude acting like a weirdo, like a path. How can my eyes fell in love with... He had lost everything but me and all the arms with all the strings minus him. I'm gonna save. Uh, okay. Let's save it there. Um, um, what if I pull me out? Give up. I'm gonna keep pulling me out. Give up. Okay, it might be the same answer if we keep choosing the same option i guess yeah there's no there is no point in that <laughs> what if i smiled at him let's save mm. yeah it was it was i'm gonna go with this one i must on my best attempt to smile but it feels lopsided and wrong at best <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> okay. 
an absolutely joyless lodger, resound throughout the hallway. He's laughing at us. Pathetic. Absolutely pitiful, really. As suddenly as it appeared, his smile re recedes from his feature to reveal an almost fragile expression. Oh, my dearest Caroline, how I squandered this chance. Huh? Next time, next time, I'll do better, I promise. Alas, till then, whenever and however that may be. What he's talking without way of warning, he knocked me out. What? There is no way to know how much time has passed once I regain consciousness. I slowly open my eyes. There's something wrong with this dude. Why are you doing man? He's, he's tying her. I can see the rope. A wave of panic washes over me as I realize I'm tied to a chair. You are tied to a chair, girl. What are you gonna do now? That's when I notice him sitting across from me, his expression hidden behind his easel. I try screaming, begging, bargaining, anything that could get him to listen. But no longer that. He simply stares off into some possible or distant somewhere he can't reach him, no, probably somewhere he can't reach either. What's in David? As he looks through me, he points my palms as though possessed. With each erotic, erratic stroke, he transposes a piece of me from reality into his compass. And once he's done, there will be nothing left of me. That's weird. Answered your own question. We got the first ending. This is the first ending. Okay. If I keep quiet, what's gonna happen? Confess your love, ask about him. Okay. If I confess your love to you, and my love to you, perhaps against my better judgment, I muster up the courage to get the words out of my mouth. Ah, uh, I am about to say something insolent and brush. Will you forgive me? You can say anything to me, and I will ac accept it. My forgiveness is always irrevocable yours. Irrevocably yours? Something about the kind look. In his eyes and the candor in his words gives me pause. I do not deserve his warmth. The reason I came here today is because I cannot forget about you. I simply cannot let you go. Ever since the eternal nightfall, everyone in this city has been lost. They are not alive. They are only puppets acting out some play along after the audience has left. I too was lost, but when I looked into your eyes for the first time, I felt found. You felt found. You aren't like them. You are the only person in the world who feels real. I know this sounds like insanity, and you are free to send me away. I have seen the way you look at me. If it's as I suspect and this feeling is something you recognize, then please let me stay by your side. My head pounds against my chest, but I feel alive to finally speak aloud. The feeling you have inside. Eh, that's good. No matter what comes next, surely you mean it. The anomaly I have been waiting for is finally here. What have you been waiting for, man? When I pick up my teacup to calm my fucking nervous, he leaps up from his seat. Wait, don't drink that. He knocks the teacup out of my hand, shattering it onto the floor. Ah. 
Oh, okay. What's wrong, dude? Ah, uh, okay. I remember he put the poison in the teacup. That's why. One of the shard, one of the shards, embed itself into my wrist and bright red. Ah, oh, we got blood. Wait, what has gotten into him? I flinched as I pulled the porcelain shard out of my wound, and in the blink of one eye, he is beside me. Very close beside me. Burglus, what's wrong with you? Are you turning into a vampire again? You can't see a blood. It takes no head, no head of the teacup. Remains all its contents spell on the floor. His gaze fixed intently on the cut. His lips press against the wounds as a driven, driven by overwhelming compulsion. Compulsion. What? You stop it. What are you doing? Don't resist. I shuddered as he runs his tongue along the blood trailing down my hand, his eyes locking onto mine. You say it yourself. You feel this bond between us as well as, well as I do. So a lot, so allow me. Then his fangs penetrate my skin deeper than the porcelain shot ever did. Tears springs at the corner of my eyes as the pain radiates from my wrist. Oh. No, Virgil, but why? Why am I crying? I can't. This what I wanted. Oh, stop it, it hurts. I just can't help it. Good me. Why did you have to go and hurt yourself? Don't worry, I'll make it feel good soon. You sure about that, man? Hmm. And. An unprecedented and exhilarating pleasure soon starts to mix into the pain shoving through me. He tries it to my cheeks, and I cannot find the strength nor the will to stop him. Ah, such a feeling must be an unnatural. Then why, why am I not stopping him? Oh, stay by my side. Okay, man. How is she gonna stay by yourself and you are sucking your blood? I'm frozen in place as he moves on top of me, sinking his fangs onto my neck and alternating his bites with the gentle kisses in the same spots. Tears pool in my eyes and blur my vision. They flow uncontrollably, but I can no longer tell if they are of sorrow or bliss. Place. This intoxicating feeling fills up every corner of my mind, overwhelming my senses until I cannot even think straight. You should, you should do something, girl. There is so much blood. If this goes on, then I'll. Uh oh. Back us, you should stop it. Stop, I. I can't even muster words, and he seems to. In a rapture to notice, lapping up what blood he can. Is this it? An, ob an observer in my own body, I lie motionless until even my heartbeat stills. Oh, he killed her. Dearest. Calvin, I. You. He killed her, man. No, answer me. No, no, wait. Why? What have I done? I... <laughs> you look, you got that man. You're a maniac. This dreaded cause. She didn't have done that. Unhappy accident. We got the second ending. 
but what a sad ending anyway. Conflicting emotions flash around the pit of my stomach, causing me to fall silent. I don't know how these paintings could possibly be of me, but how could I not feel flattered by such words? Hmm. Our meeting in the town square must have made quite an impact on him. After all, it seems he was simply afraid of overwhelming me. He's odd, but perhaps it's precisely that which has me charmed. I can't deny that the connection I feel towards him seems like something more than a whim. Something is a set light in the air between us. When our eyes meet, something that was always there in my dream, just out of reach. But he is here now, and he is real, and he feels it too. Who am I? To scoff at that when I am the only one who could possibly understand. You'd compare me to the moon. You'd compare me to the moon. It's embarrassing to admit it, but ever since I first laid eyes on you in the town square, you have been like the sun to me. Ah, you shine in these dreary days of dullness, reminding me of what good remains in the world. I bashfully quaint my eyes shut and well myself to turn invisible. I cannot believe I just say that out loud. If only you know, my dear pale one, my rays of light can only reach the true magnificence and reflect it and reflect it by the moon. Okay. I'd have expected mention okay this is the same dialogue we play the servant in the hallway where she imagined there is a servant in the house in the mansion okay, let's skip it then again with things he has said before he feels as though he already knows my heart is there any point of hiding it anymore I'm not sure girl what if I went back I just fast forward I'm gonna go back okay Good thing I like this option in the game. You can you can go back if we skipped by accident. Okay. The more I see, oh, I see all oh, his event source. The friends. Uh, okay, just I'm just gonna continue from here. I'd have expected a mansion of this size to have seven sweeping the floor conversing in hushed whisper as they pass the old hallway. However, I don't see a single soul as he guides me to the drawing room. Our only companion is the echo sound of our footstep. A component. The more I see of his resonance, the more I am reminded of a ruin, a tomb. Where some nobleman lies buried beneath piles of luxurious uh, no one has used. A deep sense of loneliness seeps out of every wall. I wonder how he feels, wandering through this hallway all alone. Here you are. Please have a seat. I'll be right back. He gestures at a worn down but clearly well made sofa before disappearing behind the door. I sit down and look around the room to pass the time. It is beautiful but looks somehow disheveled. The candles stand crooked in the candlestick and a thin layer of dust covers my surface in the room, further exemplifying its appearance. Dizes. He steps back inside, a silver tray held delicacy in hand. I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. That is all. He swiftly placed down two elegant teacups 
on the table, their aromatic steam breathing life into the solace of the room. The side of the lace daily pristine white color makes a slight worry creep on my back. I must not spell the tea. Steadying my hand, I lift the teacup and bring it to my lips. The tea ripples as I brew on it gently. Of course, it is entirely too hot to drink. This was merely a practic one. Perhaps a few minutes of conversation should... Okay, let's suck a bit. I'll take it. You do not make much use of drawing room. He lowers his cup and... I suppose it was obvious. The majority of my time is spent in my outlier or in my study. Mm, when I read. As you can likely tell by now, this place is far too spacious for me alone. Well, since you are living alone, yeah, it is too big for you. Still, as long as I live in this dread city, I can't bring myself to abandon my family home. Even if little reminds of those who once called it so. Perhaps especially so because of that. Oh, because of that, you say. A far silent for the moment, unsure to how to respond. So I distract him from the dreary topic by delving into our shared interest in reading. Maybe you should do that, girl. I don't know. It doesn't feel right. Skirting around his tragedy merely because it's unpleasant. Was it? The red pledge, my sister and I lost our parents and baby brother. It must be hard not having. Mm. I didn't mean to make you pity me. Death might be a conclusion compared to wandering around this ghost of city. I do hope your family is at peace. Apologize. I did not mean to dampen the mood. Now, enough of all that. Tell me. To what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? Oh no, I can't avoid it anymore. I come, I came here for a reason, but would it be observed to lie? Hmm. Then again, with things he has said before, it feels as though he only didn't know my heart. He only know how she feels. Somehow, it does say the way he's talking at every ending. What if I ask about him instead? Despite feeling confidence earlier, I have lost my nerve. Thinking about how I compared him to the sun makes me feel like an time. How I would love to confess, but cannot do it yet. Hmm. Why did he have to ask me so frightfully? I look into his captivating amber eyes and take a sip of mine. I can't be used to lie to him. All I can do is avoid his inquiry by subtly changing the subject. Oh, but where are my manners? I haven't even introduced myself. My name is... Shh. Shh. Before I realize, he put his finger to my lips. Our first touch, I can't suppress the faintest flutter of my heart. He is really happy because he did that simple step on her. Anyway, our first touch, I can't suppress the fine the chill of his of his cold skin lingers on my lips even when he moves his hand away. It is not important, not yet. I'll get to know you in many ways. This one will be the last. What are you talking about? I know that there was something more to him from the first moment I saw him. My fascination with him is only heightened with these mysterious decorations. Ah, <sighs> very well, I'll wait you. In return, will you tell me your name? Berglas, Berglas, Delanceroy. Berglas, Berglas, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. He sheepishly notes. I let his name swish round the inside of my mouth like wine. It is pleasant. 
Have you been living in the city for long? Ah, oh, very long. Longer than I can be bothered to remember. Tell me, have you ever tried to leave? Me? Leave? Where to? I mean, what do you want me to do? Based on what I have heard, the journey past these city walls spell certain death for someone like me. I have tried. It is not the journey that is it is impossible. It's a very it's the very act of stepping outside the city walls. Come some city walls, some dark force wraps itself around me. Enough to make me stagger and suffer, but never enough to kill. So like you, I have been stuck here wanting nothing more than to leave yet not knowing how. My eyes widen with curiosity I've never heard of Elar who has tried to leave this place. We all resign ourselves to our hopeless fate and do nothing but pray to the one Lord that things will change, but they never do. Everything only falls into further this repair yet i still cannot shake that small grain of hope what embeds itself in my head i want to know what he has found i left my cup to take another sip of my tea but i feel myself growing heavy and my attention slips i do hope the tea was to your liking <laughs> I'm gonna skip it. Refuse? Yeah. He wants my blood. Okay. This is where he poisoned her, and this is the part we are about to take the other option. As I com contemplate the name of my escape, he takes my songs. Yeah, I can say. Just please consider it. But both of us, I'll leave you for now. Besides, I need to finish what I start. Finish what he's. Oh, okay, he gonna suck the other man's blood. This dude. I'm gonna skip it and then we should. What if I ask? Let's uh, let's save me. Yeah. Let's on. Ask what will happen. What? If I refuse, will you take more innocent people's lives only to prolong your own? You misunderstand. They are not people. Surely you have realized it by now. Here. Where darkness reigns and emptiness echoes, we are the only survivors. You sure about that, man? Falco, you sure about that? Don't think so. They are the last. They are lost to the Cecil, pale one. They trudge on, possessed by something akin to instinct. But there is no soul left within. I find myself at the loose. Oh why? I was too sleepy. I could not deny what I have thought the same thing he has, but it isn't right to reduce human to nothing so easily. How can we know what goes on in their minds? Yeah, we don't know. How can you be so sure? Is it not mere arrogance to put yourself above everyone else like that? Yeah, that's not good, man. I am entirely certain. Yeah. Pearl one. If we had walk, have walked through the same streets, come across the same husk, then we both bear witness to that place. But it's just like you to still think of them as human as beings that still have hopes and dreams. I'm glad to see you still have that infectious optimism it warms my heart good morning dear pale one i hope you slept well will you offer me your blood ask why he wants your blood i'm gonna ask that let's say best oh. i'm too sleepy let's return I could tell you the answer, 
but do you not believe me? You never do. Promise to believe him. Then I promise to believe you. That's not an easy promise to make. Tell me, pale one, would you want to save the city if you could? She put on in to the eternal night. If you could bring things back to how they were, then surely that would be better. Look at my baby. But they've tried many things. It nigh impossibly to solve a problem if you don't know the chaos. It is hard if you don't know what is the chaos. <laughs> okay, he's laughing now. I'm taking a bag as he laughed, almost mockingly through there is no amusement in his eyes. You know of the cards. Chaos. Oh yes, the chaos. Of course, I would know it, because I am the chaos. This is my dreadful cause, pale one. It's only saving grace the way to it binds me to you. What do you mean, man? He glanced out the window toward the red moon. You did promise to believe me this time. Please, help me understand you. Help me understand this cause. He closes his eyes and takes a moment to think what to say. He looks at me with conviction. The flu of time is distorted in this place. Which is why we cannot leave. We live in the pocket of the world, governed by its own laws. Time falls and loops in, a, in on itself over and over and over again. It's not something the human mind was made to be to bear. With every passing reassurance, another loses her identity completely. I am the only one who is forced to remember it all, not allowed the luxury of forgetting I am, but a prisoner of my own memories. Prisoner of your own memories. What he say is hard to swallow, it's a lot, and I don't know how any of it could make sense, but I am determined to keep my promise. I've seen what he describes. No one is themselves anymore. Perhaps they're nothing more than husk after all. So you've lived through all of this only to see the world move further and further from its proper state. He gives court notes. I would like to believe that things do get better, that this city will be saved one day. But that hope is becoming increasingly difficult to hold on to. The more I ponder it, the more it feels like last chaos. I mean, what is the point in dozing a house that has a lady torn to ash, even if you were to live this cause, what is left to rise from its shadow? shadow but you you are the only constant your pure soul is enough to withstand the weight of time piling up he soft his soft smile takes on a different meaning to me now he must have lived in the long loneliest of worlds if all he lives throw isn't real to anyone else, then how could anyone else feel real to him? I've tried to approach you countless times, but somehow we are fate to end each other. Then time we range without a care, and I am the only one who remembers what we've been through. Hmm. In recent season, I hope I have kept my distance, for it holds more to be with you than to simply watch 
from afar. That why I thought I could be content seeing you about your day, seeing your life, and un unattained by my deeds. And me, I am nothing but a shadow of the man I once was. I too have lost myself, though not like the others. Their fate might be merciful compared to mine. This fine dish at last, for blood has finished blood of blood has only intensified and makes me ashamed of myself. I grasp his shaking hands in mine, overcome with the desire to ease his suffering. Who would ever make us make up such a story as this? They only tell me now. They only tell me now. I am holding on, on to my promise in the deepest recess of my heart, and that means discarding any doubt. Discarding any doubt. Have you told me all this many times before? It must be not be easy to stay kind and patient when all your actions are brought to now time and again and no one else remembers any of it the next day oh, that must be harsh for i have tried to tell you many time many at a time but without the right lead up it okay don't you might run from me or retaliate in violence sometimes you make fun of me other times you grow frightened <laughs> i've seen almost every face you can make but this kind of occurrence is rare you looking at me with kindness is in many ways my greatest real life but it is not new it has happened before a handful of times those loops are the most painful. I grow attached to you only to lose you. Ah, oh, unfortunate that fated loss has not been overcome. So this time too, I will resist the temptation to hope. My fingers traces the line of his palm as he speaks. He does not stare, stare, so he must not mind it. All I can do is listen to Al and hope that warms each thing. But I am being unfair. I am only manipulating you by telling you one side of this tale. Belva, my dearest. Inside of me, another impulse tugs at my sanity. I can feel that wavering need crawling under my skin, begging to be sad, sad I wish not only to have you for myself, more than anything, I wish to ruin you. Knowing our inevitable final destination, why not let me be a merciful and end you myself, knowing that it's out of love and end you myself. Seeing you twist up and contort in vain, or letting you submit to the wells of something primal and terrible, crushing the one good thing left in miserable nightmare, in this miserable nightmare. I know that it is all temporary, so why bother with decency anymore? Nothing means anything and shame ceases to exist. It's no more real than the fairy tale to anyone but me. My downfall is mine alone to witness. As he speaks, he grips my hand tightly. He now begs into my skin but not enough to draw blood. You gonna saw your blood again? I call your bluff. You are testing me. You are trying to scare me off before you find yourself actually caring again. 
None of this is a bluff, dear pal one. It's all true. If you could see the fates I put you through, recall things, the things I have made you feel, you would not want me anywhere near you. You would lose me. You are holding back at even now, aren't you? Otherwise, you would have forcefully taken my blood. Your dedication is admirable. And if it matters to you so much, show me those fates then. I want to remember. She wanna remember, man. If we are only ones who will live through this tragedy, then I want to be there for all of it. <laughs> okay, my beautiful, innocent pal. Why? I have yet to answer your question. In order to end this cycle of terror, I need your blood for only yours can purify my cause. I have tried taking it forcefully, but it never works, you lose. Indeed, you must offer me your blood without cautious. Where she's in faith and innocence. Then and only then will the cause live and the eternal light end, and everything will return to how it once was. I am afraid I cannot answer that as I have never gotten to that point. We would have to. Okay. You guys gonna try it? However, I do not believe the damage road can be undone. Those whose mind have been ground to dust will likely collapse physically as well. In fact, I do not know the effect of introducing a regular loop of time to those who have been in a closed loop for so long. Then isn't it dangerous? What about you or me? A vampire cannot live to face the sun, right? What kind of life would you even lead? Yeah, what kind of life, man. Would you believe me if I said I hadn't thought about it? This whole time, I have been walking towards an empty goal. I do not know what lies beyond it, but I have nothing else to try. That's not the right way to for anyone to live. There has there has to be some point to all of this madness. How do you even know that this is the only option? He told me. Who he? Who you are talking about? The one who orchestrated this ordeal. Before he left, he told me that you were the key to all of this. How she is the key to all of this? I didn't understand the significance of any of it at the, at the time. In fact, I didn't even realize what had happened. Significance. And here I thought that this was all your fault. <laughs> he laughs humorously again. But I am a villain, all the same. Ah, I know that expression. It is one I used to wear. Of course, by the time I realized the inescapable gravity of my fate, I was furious. My rage was on available flame. Was unavailable flame. But time does all senses, and there is no direction for this feeling. I took it out on you many times, but that only made me feel worse with each passing mood. Ah, oh, unfortunate. You can't go get mad on air because of that. Yeah, you need to find an option. I'll talk with her, not kill her. That's the problem you have, man. You killing her. Of course, who knows how long it's been for him, perhaps. He himself cannot, blah blah blah. The feeling of someone who might 
as well beyond outside of hearing this for the first time can begin to compare. I don't think it's right any of this. His acceptance of his rule as some great evil is saddening. I won't have it. But what can he begin to do? I couldn't possibly care about lifting the city burden. Now that I've told you all this, it might be enough for me. Hmm. It feels like some weight has been lifted off my shoulder. You truly are skilled at keeping your promises. It is but one of my many talents. Surely throw surely through all this time, you must have seen them in actions. For example, fearlessly going through with plans anyone else would have deemed to observe to attempt. It's just such an ending up on my doorstep without having spoken a single word to me before. <laughs> Maybe. What on earth were you were your intention? Don't make fun of me. <laughs> How could I ever? Well I cannot help it. I come to confess my love. I came to confess my love. You, you don't leave me speechless too often anymore. It will be quite the shame when I have to part from you this time. Who says we have to? Well, no. Your grace us with even more absurd plans. Hmm. We can be tied together for all of eternity by forgetting about this tragedy and denying the mastermind the payoff he's waiting for. Hmm, I pull him towards me, and with my mouth close to his ear, I speak in a hushed voice. I know the tales later, for once, he can make this great place of passing. Let me have your blood instead. To become what you are and stay here by your side forever. You don't know what you are saying. You will throw everything away for me. Uh, might be. That is what I came here to do in the, fa in the first place. There is nothing here, nothing left, not for me, nor for you. I have tried to take control of my destiny many times. I've kept my distance in hopes it would offer you peace. I have lost hope entirely. But I suppose I have never tried submitting to your will. Well, you didn't try it, you should try it, man. What do we stand here? Less than we stand to gain. Uh -huh. okay. I just hope she doesn't kill him. The sensation of Sinking your teeth into someone's neck is a strange one. She's a vampire also? Is she? I don't know. Can you guys tell me that? It takes a lot of determination to pierce the skin, to muster the courage to follow through. I have never been one to hold others, but I know that this pain I inflict is entirely desired. And based on his reaction, I dare say it is somewhere pleasant, pleasurable. It makes me happy. I never knew how good it would feel. And the taste of his blood is nostalgic. Fergulous. Hmm. Will it be mine? Always was, dear Pelo. Always was. Landing fire, embracing the night. That was the best ending, guys. What if I ask about the portrait? Play along. Yeah, I'm gonna play along. Oh, okay. Uh, confess your love, I guess. Ask about him instead. Mm. Let me 
save. Peter! Ya confess your love. Gain better judgment. I must have come about something to help and push. Will you forgive me? You can say anything to me and I will accept it. My forgiveness is always. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna fast forward. You guys can read it. Something about the kind look. His eyes and. You do not deserve the worms. The reason I came here today because I cannot forget about you. Simply cannot. But since the eternal night. Well. Everyone, they are alive, they are only puppets acting out some play long after the audience has left. I too was lost, but I have lots onto your eyes the first time I found. You aren't them, you are the only person in this world who feels real. I know this sounds like insanity, and you are free to send me away. I have seen the way you look at me. Uh... If it's as I suspect, and this feeling is something you recognize, please let me stand by your side. My heart pounds again in my chest, but I feel relieved to finally speak about the feeling I held inside. No matter what comes, I will not leave it. Joy, elation, words fall short of. Describing the feeling you have inside me. I was right this time. Finally, you have come to your sense and have, and have come to see. He holds out his hand to me. It doesn't matter what I do not understand. Why? None of this matters. Only he and I exist. And that is the truth. Briefly, I think back to my home. To my workshop, where I make the same dreamless roofs day after day until my hands can remember the steps better than I remember the faces. To my sister who try as she may to suppress it, hold that quiet resentment in here, in her gaze. As she looks at me, why was I the only who lived and not my sister and not my brother? And now I can leave it all behind, none of these ties have to bain me as long as I have another thread. Take his hands. This eternal might exist because we cannot fulfill our rules without one another. You understand, don't you? Your purity is mine and mine alone to corrupt. Corrupt me then, I won't protest. I'll make sure to savor it slowly. I think he might be dangerous. This might be entirely warp, a cha chaos, a choice born out of desperation. But right now, that thought doesn't reach my head. All of this makes sense. No, it has to make sense if it doesn't. The red moon has hallowed, hallowed us all out and I don't know how much longer I could have taken it before or well, I would have ended up like them you would have ended up like them it is better to go out in blaze than to be grounded to dust it is better man he waves he moves over and brushes his fingers against me softly running them Pass along my chest, then over my lips and down my neck. Every touch sends a spark that elevates my loneliness just a little more. But bit by bit, he creases every inch of my exposed skin, making me making me tremble. His breeze tickles my ear as he whispers. I want to rip you open. If only I could live inside you. Ah, but don't worry. I'll make sure no harm befall you, my love. I press my lips against his shakily, but my hesitance finds no reply in him as he pulls me in. 
his mouth moves against mine and satibly seeming to carry the weight the weight of a lifetime of the year if it's, it's nothing I have ever I mount into his rhythm with a sign wrapping my arms around him as I lost space in my ability to support my own body then he parts from me and takes my face in his hands a smile spreads across his face as he presses his forehead against mine I have seen you in so many forms but this one is new this one is new to him Even the skin of blood in your veins has become sweeter. Sweeter. Hmm. You love her that much. This dude. How lucky she is. Everyone has forgotten the hundreds upon thousands of times this night has repeated, even you. I am the only one who remembers all of you. That is why I am the only one who can have you. You're mine. I'm yours. A master and submissive. If I am allowed to say that, he runs his tongue along my neck. I feel his fangs raise against my skin and hold back. It's so it's true. It's not that I never heard of them before. Those scars to walk between life and death. I suppose I had thought them more of a tale to scare misbehaving children. Maybe I should have known when I saw his grin. He is vampire. If you offer me your blood, the eternal night will come to a final end. Our course will be dissolved. You will be free. Go on then, do it. But freedom can be a terrifying thing. I will have you, won't I? Unable to stay away from him now that I have had a taste, I kiss him again. A quiet, a quiet peace falls over us as we desperately try to fill the gaps between our physical forms. My dearest pale one, his fangs brush against my neck once more, but they ask to sink deeper this time. Taking a deep breath, I give a small nod. My breath, my he breaks my skin and I shut my eyes tightly. It bonds quite hot but the pain isn't unpleasant absolutely delicious i feel him softly chuckle against me taste better without resistance after all he desperately drains me to the point where i start to feel light headed and loosen my grip a tug at his back he pauses to look down at me my weakness body collapses onto his at the words as the word stares. Through closed eyes I can feel it. I am unfamiliar, an unfamiliar sensation warm thin strokes of light filtrate through the window. <sighs> I open my eyes in shock and cling onto him, locking the strings to lift my arms. What man? It seems my cause does not end here. Hey, what? What? No, wait! He slowly rises a length and towards me. My moon. He hugs and cuffs with the features scrunched in anguish as flames clutch at his back. Oh no, the first light of dawn is no sweet real life to a creature of the night. How would he not have known? Or did he know? 
Do I detect the faintest trace of a smile amidst all the pain, or is it merely a trick of light of the lights? No, the cracking noise makes me wings wince as Harbor's strange image from his shared and twisted skin. Smoke climbed from my nose and mouth, suffocating me slowly. I can no longer tell if my tears are from the pain or from the tragedy of this outcome. Can my body quell these flames or will they simply spread and consume me? Is there anything I can do? Don't call. You can't. No, please. Oh, unfortunate. You can't leave me behind. What am I supposed to do without you? But he has no mouth to respond to me with. Before my lies nothing. For me lies nothing but a pile of dust. Of ash. Unfit to meet the light of day. Or is it? The start the game. To unlock another loot. Okay, I'm gonna restart the game. How about if I just restart it? Let's see the CG collection. Okay, there's two lips. Alright, guys. Okay, we just started. I'm gonna skip it. Skip, skip, skip. Where is the skip button? Okay, there you go. Yeah. I'm just gonna skip it. <clears throat> the game feature text description, blah blah blah. Good day. Please come in. It's quite chilly outside here, there. That sounds. Wait. That cannot be true. I do know him. His name is Vergos. Vergos de Lanceriu. Hug. Okay, wait. She 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 remembers now. I clutch my head and wince. In the midst of pain, I can feel something tagging the recess of my mind, pausing distant. Unfamiliar skin back uh she is remembering everything now. This eternal exists because we cannot fulfill our rules without one another. You understand, don't you? Your purity is mine, and mine alone to corrupt. Corrupt me then, I won't protest. I'll make sure to savor it slowly. Excuse me, are you alright? I'm, I'm fine. I have tried to take control of my destiny many times. I've kept my destiny in hopes it would afford you peace. I've lost hope entirely. But I suppose I have never tried submitting to you well. What do we stand for? Less than we stand to gain? Hmm. You see, Manuel, please come in and have a seat. Might I offer you some tea? The memories food my mind as I sit down on the now in this now familiar sofa and I can't speak. He comes in with a platter of tea. I know that tea is all well. It is the poison tea. <laughs> okay. I wonder if he has lead laced it with sedative this time. If it's alright for me to pray, will you tell me what's on your mind? Carelessly whip my tears away with my sleeves as what and, and slightly display. And slightly display. Though I suppose he has already seen me. Bergliss, my fated one. Have I told you my name? No, no. I haven't. Not this time, at least. And. And now the ball gush escape. Gasp escape his lips. He grips everything he is holding. He drops everything he is holding, struggling to keep. Okay, he stumbles toward me and grabs my shoulders. The light that within his eyes brighter than ever. Okay, 
guess this is your... He is panicked. Well, one, is it really true? Shush. I put my finger to his mouth. Uh, wait, what? An exceptic has... Really? <sighs> 12 seconds later. Well, uh, what's gonna happen? Uh, what should I do here? Happy, open, ignore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna ignore. My name is Bell One. He kisses my finger, still pressed to his lips. Bell One, he's really happy. Wait, wait. I'm gonna just uh, uh, preference full screen, full screen. Okay, so guys. Okay, go. Going back to the game now. Let's continue our game. Return. Well, I have decided. It does not matter who we will follow. In. Inadvertently, we deserve to have. I'm going to have faith in you. We can break out of this cage. You must have grown different, but I cannot forgive the one who did this. Let's travel beyond this night, beyond this city. I want to laugh in the face of evil and give back all that we receive. And after we have put things right, believe we can find a place for us to belong. I extend my hand towards him. Will you join me? <laughs> oh, I do want to see the look in his face. This must have been outside the scape. The scope of his machinations, machination, machinations. Okay, anyway, well, one, I cannot promise you normal, no, normalcy. I cannot promise you anything. The damage has already been done. I do not, I'm not the man that I used to be. Well, of course, but promise are my talents. Promises are my town. Let me have my niche. Come on. How long do I have to stand here like this? He finally grasped my hand in both of his. I'll follow your lead then, fell one. It won't be easy, you know. There is no going back. If you agree to it now, I won't let you change your mind till it later. <laughs> His left hand reaches toward my face, lifting up my chin to allow our eyes to meet. Well, one, might I have your blood? With pleasure. I don't know what I expected, but it was in the gentle ones of his lips upon not mine. He kisses me softly, almost uncertainly, at first. Then, he bites into my lip. That familiar hot red rush washes over me more sweetly than ever before. Approximate thousands we will meet a new morning, a morning that is truly ours. The future is an uncertain and terrifying place. We grow comfortable with our inviolable misery more easily. Then you would like to admit. Like to admit. Sometimes the devil you have, you know, is better than even the ray of light you don't. Darkness cannot comprehend light and despair. To break the system, we need to jump that chasm, even when we cannot see the other side. At the end of the eternal night, what await us? I do not know, but I can't wait to find out. I did like the last ending. And I think it was the, the third ending? No, no, it was the third, fifth ending also. I did like both of these endings because it had, they had sweeter ending to them. Unfortunately, the first one, the rest of the ending, the first one, the second one, I guess, the first one, they were all sad. I didn't even like her when she was <laughs> kept alive. I mean, when he held her on the chair. It was nice experience playing the game uh, with multiple endings. 
I, I really like this kind of game that has multiple ending options for you to explore. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Feel free to tell me anything, any game you want me to try. Thank you guys for watching and hope I can see you in my next video. Bye bye.